the last talk for today given by Igor Starobinsky from Research and Education Center Gazprom Neft Politech. Uh, today I want to uh, show some of our results with the plan of review model and uh, I thank previous speakers for great coverage of uh, this topic and this model and I uh, see that uh, uh, plan of review model can actually be used in uh, uh, many different cases but as was said uh, we have uh, some uh, problems still in uh, uh, terms of practical use and I'll try to address uh, some of uh, just uh, recent solutions to recent ideas to this problem. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, explain details uh, because of this uh, great coverage of the topics and uh, just say that we see uh, this whole pipeline of uh, uh, creating uh, structure design is uh, uh, like a collaboration between uh, the model of the well and the uh, model of the fracture. And uh, uh, additionally, we use uh, uh, a program to predict uh, micro seismic activity, and uh, uh, it allows us to uh, understand what kind of uh, nature fractures may interact with our main fracture and uh, in terms of uh, uh, practical use uh, we can uh, collaborate our models to, uh, especially full 3d model to uh, use it in case uh, uh, we have a lot of nature fractures and uh, uh, we can't use uh, such a classic models like pseudo 3d and uh, we're not sure can we use plan 3d because it's uh, only allow uh, the fracture to propagate within a plane uh, so we can uh, switch from plan 3d uh, model to full 3d statement and uh, it allows us to uh, describe interaction between different fractures uh, so, uh, some of these uh, uh, results uh, for full 3D model was uh, shown to you by uh, Dr. Lacken, and uh, I'm not going to uh, speak about uh, uh, it uh, long, but uh, I'll show you some of uh, our different results. So, uh, model equations are pretty much uh, the same with uh, what uh, previous speakers show you and uh, we have some uh, additional ideas and uh, as uh, Dr. Inkov suggests we use uh, explicit time integration scheme and uh, uh, to increase the uh, time step we can switch to implicit explicit uh, scheme uh, and the equation is uh, in the system uh, is presented and also we use uh, asymptotes uh, that uh, I just described uh, also by Dr. Linkov in his uh, uh, works and was uh, shown to you today. And we use it to uh, describe front propagation. So as you can see, uh, Plan 3D model, it's uh, uh, allows us to describe uh, quite uh, uh, complex physics, but uh, uh, still, of course, it comes with a price and its price is uh, computational costs. And uh, this is one of the biggest problems I suppose we need to address because uh, the only other big uh, minus for this model is uh, that, as I said, we can only uh, predict uh, uh, fracture propagation within the plane. So uh, this we can solve by switching to full 3D models and uh, computational costs are really uh, like the only bad idea for this uh, model in, in terms of practical use but still we uh, can achieve many great results uh, uh, with it and uh, to show you that uh, our solution in, uh, like a program model is uh, 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 was developed with uh, such figs. I want to show you some examples. Uh, the first one you already saw it's an uh, example of a fracture propagation uh, with applied uh, elastic uh, modular contrast and uh, you can see that uh, we can solve uh, such a case in terms of uh, pseudo 3D model because uh, the contrast in uh, such cases is negative and also we can 
uh, describe uh, uh, multi-stage injections and it can be different fluids, it can be different propellants and uh, uh, for example you can see a uh, stochastic solution for propellant transport. Uh, so the advantages of the physical model is that we can uh, really use uh, different uh, properties for fluid in each cell, uh, in each computational cell, I mean, uh, and uh, uh, it allows us to uh, describe uh, proper transport and uh, uh, the use of uh, asymptotes allows us to uh, describe uh, uh, front propagation uh, with a really small error, but uh, uh, we are trying to achieve a uh, uh, great uh, 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 productiveness in terms of uh, speed of calculations. And uh, one of uh, advantages of uh, uh, our model is that we use uh, additional terms uh, to the uh, influence matrix that allow us to consider uh, contrast of elastic model uh, and uh, it's a uh, uh, gives precisely the same results with uh, when you uh, use full 3D uh, model and uh, in which uh, elastic model uh, can be calculated uh, in uh, explicit way. Uh, and for, uh, this is an example of calculation uh, uh, of micro seismic activities that uh, we predict uh, based on our fracture propagation. Uh, you can see that. Uh, these uh, uh, nature fractures that are activated uh, by the main fracture are uh, mainly uh, positioned uh, near the front, so uh, it uh, allows to uh, find uh, uh, these particular fractures that will be activated by uh, uh, our hydraulic fracturing, and uh, uh, we can uh, filter or that fractures that uh, we don't want to consider. Uh, this is important when you use full 3D model because uh, more fractures you need to calculate, uh, more time you require to, it, uh, to do it. So uh, we believe that it's uh, not very accurate to use uh, such uh, mathematical ideas like uh, when you create uh, many, many fractures uh, and uh, uh, then just uh, allow your uh, fracture to uh, grow and uh, you don't uh, uh, really need, uh, know which fractures uh, actually uh, will be activated and uh, which you can you know like filter out so uh, the connection between these two models allows us to uh, uh, do a more accurate calibration in terms of uh, mathematical modeling and to uh, speak about uh, speeding up our program i want to show you this, uh, two of our ideas uh, first one is that we try to uh, increase uh, increase the size of the cell and uh, it's of course obvious but uh, you know, when you use exclusive time integration scheme you don't need to uh, recalculate um, any matrices you just uh, uh, you set new uh, size uh, for your cell and just uh, uh, can go uh, with, this cal uh, with the calculations uh, further. And in terms of uh, fracturing, we able to uh, calculate like one, maybe two hour uh, of uh, hydraulic fracturings in uh, seconds. I mean like uh, one, two, three, five, or maybe 10 seconds. Uh, but of course we need to do uh, such an increase uh, like uh, two, three times to achieve that. Uh, but uh, still you, uh, you can say that these uh, results will be uh, pretty accurate. So uh, the error uh, will be not uh, such a big when you compare to uh, more time requiring solution. And the second idea is uh, uh, the use of asymptotes in uh, such case when you don't uh, actually have the line or the front, you just uh, have uh, uh, these tracing circles and uh, uh, with the help of it, you can 
and describe from propagation without actually uh, needing to calculate the norm. And uh, you can uh, easily describe what will be the new elements. Uh, so you just uh, need to, to check uh, the uh, geometric uh, criteria and to uh, check will this uh, will the speeding up uh, give us errors that can be neglectable. Uh, we use different uh, approaches to validate our results. Of course, we try to compare with uh, what's published in the papers, and also we used uh, methodology. Uh, described by uh, Shell, Padirin, and Kabanova uh, to uh, check if uh, our program realization really uh, can be compared to the physical models that we uh, try to use here. So uh, the first plot uh, shows you uh, uh, different results for the volume of injected fluid or uh, time of injection. Uh, in when it compared uh, to the length of the fracture. And uh, as you can see, with uh, similar fracture forms, uh, this uh, proportionality in uh, such an axis will be just a line. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, we uh, really implemented uh, uh, the uh, physical model uh, pretty accurate in terms of uh, this methodology. And uh, to address the question about uh, the closing of the fracture, uh, as you can see, we use uh, uh, carter likov law uh, to describe uh, 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 the flow from our fracture outside. And uh, we can say that uh, due to uh, our computational math, may, uh, we can't uh, just get uh, uh, just on the lines that uh, should be uh, here in this axis uh, with some function of uh, volume, but uh, compliance is actually pretty good. Uh, this is uh, our results for PKN-like fracture, and uh, in uh, uh, such a kind of situation, uh, uh, you just uh, uh, you will see the line in terms of analytical solution and uh, in this axis, and we can see that uh, compliance uh, grow with the time or with uh, uh, volume of the injected fluid. And when you uh, try to calculate uh, closing of the fracture, like in these two cases. Uh, you can see that uh, we can actually do it, and the opening will. Uh, it uh, grows for, for, for some time, but then we uh, don't inject fluid anymore. And uh, we see two processes here. Uh, one is that the fracture closes. And uh, the second is that the form of the fracture, it changes. So you can see that uh, uh, the bottom of the fracture, it uh, gets uh, bigger and uh, height of fracture growth, but you can also see that uh, on the top part of the fracture, uh, it's split it in uh, two pieces. So this one uh, doesn't have any uh, hydraulic connection to the main fracture. And uh, this is because of the uh, closing process. So our fracture uh, and fluid uh, in it returns to the main layer, uh, and uh, we see the uh, closure uh, on the top. And of course, we can uh, pump more fluid, and then these two fractures will eventually connect. So the main idea of uh, uh, my speech was to uh, show you our uh, model for Planet 3D. Uh, and uh, our implementation, and we must say that uh, though we have uh, some problems uh, with it in terms of uh, stability, of course, due to use of the explicit time integration scheme, we need to use uh, really small time steps, uh, but still we can obtain uh, results that uh, are uh, more accurate in terms of uh, physics and mathematics uh, when you can 
uh, compare with uh, simpler models like pseudo-3D, but uh, still we can implement uh, uh, sufficiently complex uh, physics with uh, uh, not such uh, a big cost in terms of computation. So when you connect uh, this uh, plan 3D implementation with other models, you can create uh, uh, such a uh, pipeline that uh, allow you to uh, describe uh, many processes in uh, like uh, form, uh, like optimization when you uh, need to uh, calculate many different options and find uh, the best design uh, for your fracture and it can uh, really be done with uh, plan 3D models now and uh, we not only see that by our program realization but uh, with uh, uh, the results of our colleagues from Russia and from other countries and uh, some of these uh, results you also hear today uh, so I really believe in this model and I think that we need to uh, develop more uh, 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 add more uh, uh, equation to the system so we now are able to increase it in uh, terms of practical use and uh, for example our models uh, it, uh, it allow us to uh, give uh, temperature and uh, time dependent properties uh, to the fluid so uh, when you inject fluid in the fracture, you can see that uh, in each computational cell, uh, the fluid have uh, different properties uh, due to uh, the temperature increase and the time increase and so on and so on. And uh, I uh, believe that uh, if you speak about a modern simulator, we need to uh, look for models like uh, Plan 3D and Full 3D and its uh, cooperation. So, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Igor, for uh, interesting presentation. So we have uh, some time for questions, please. Okay, may I ask, so uh, how much time does it take to simulate, say, typical one hour of pumping using your model? Uh, uh, in in terms of practical use, we can obtain results in seconds. And when you uh, want to uh, get more accurate results, uh, I believe we, speaks, uh, we speak about minutes. So it's uh, one, two minutes when you are looking for some scientific results and uh, uh, seconds if you want to, for example, uh, solve some kind of optimization problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and I think you have not mentioned the propant uh, simulations. Uh, um, yes, I uh, didn't tell much about it, but uh, actually uh, we use uh, two solutions for uh, simulation of the propant transport. And the uh, first one allows us to uh, describe only injection of one type of propant, but uh, uh, again, in each computation cell, uh, the uh, fluid uh, will have uh, uh, different properties uh, due to the propant uh, concentration. And uh, uh, if you want to uh, inject different types of propant, you can use this uh, stochastic solution that uh, an example is shown on the right side. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you uh, at uh, propane concentration uh, from different stages, you'll see that uh, uh, it's uh, in uh, most parts of the fracture actually. So we, uh, in that case, we don't see uh, much of the gravity effect uh, due to uh, high uh, speed of the injection. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have a question from Professor Pierce, please. Um, thank you, Diego, for a very interesting talk. I, I mean, I, I missed a little bit the the actual definition of your your equations. I mean, they look like. I mean, is the difference between the the planar three D model, for example, that? Uh, uh, okay, so 
the influence matrix, that's the fully, that's the boundary integral formulation, presumably, right? Right. Uh, yeah, so any difference uh, in uh, classical statements for this model and uh, our uh, solution, I tried to, um, uh, I tried to explain. So, uh, specifics are that we use uh, a universal asymptotic umbrella that's uh, described in this paper uh, for front uh, propagation and uh, influence matrix. Uh, it's uh, basically Green's matrix uh, uh, that uh, uh, allows to describe uh, 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 contrast of layer properties such as uh, elastic model and uh, compressive stress values. Uh, I think uh, else is basically the same. Uh, we just use uh, different uh, integration approaches such as uh, IMAX scheme and uh, explicit scheme. So this IMAX scheme, uh, actually it was, it was uh, invented by some colleagues here at UBC. Uh, you, it looks like you're using a Laplacian. Uh, yes, yes. So what is the justification for that? Uh, it allows us to increase uh, the time step uh, uh, code in terms of uh, explicit time integration. Uh, we have uh, some problems uh, with uh, different fluids because uh, you need to uh, check what uh, actual time step you can uh, use in terms of stability. And then you uh, switch to IMAX scheme. Of course, you can uh, choose a high value of this step and the practical terms as I say it's uh, 300% the, bigger to my mind the dynamics you know the second equation gives the dynamics of w with respect to yes. i mean that couples it to the pressure uh, what's the justification for putting in that great uh, laplacian the difference between the laplacians so it, uh, it's so a way to increase the same Oh, it is a numerical trick. It's, mm, it cannot be justified rigorously. So it's like putting uh, artificial viscosity in numerical scheme. Okay, so, so like that's that. some sort of regularizing term. That, yeah, that something stabilizes. like regularization. Yeah. Okay. Of course, we lose the accuracy at this step, but uh, at the same time, yeah, we can play with the time step and increase it and check uh, the accuracy by comparing with the uh, yeah, because I mean, you, you, you're you using a different, I mean, you're basically solving in the third equation, you're solving some sort of Laplacian, you know. Uh, uh, yes. uh, it gives <laughs> us uh, five uh, diagonal metrics that uh, we can solve. Oh yeah, it's very, it's very quick. The, uh, the, I'm just wondering where it, it came from. It was sort of. Uh, it's a trick. Yeah, but it, it works. Yeah. It works. Uh, it allows yeah, to like increase the, the time step by factor of two sometimes. Oh, I, I understand that, but, yeah, even more. but why? <laughs> why does it work? I mean, it, <laughs> <laughs> you, I well, mean, usually these things have a justification, right? Uh, yeah, uh, of course it can be explained, but uh, I believe that uh, it will require me some time to. Uh, you could, oh, for fine. example, add a fourth order operator, a biharmonic operator or something, you know, that that will make it even. So with this IMEX scheme, you basically invert this. Uh, well, it wouldn't be tridiagonal, it would be pentadiagonal in 2D, right? Yeah. Yes. But that's pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Gore, once again.